fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Faster, boy, faster. I will still The end of a hot and dusty day found the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan Reed on a trail that led from Sawtooth Range into the surrounding flat country. Oh, 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 oh. Golly, it's really hot. The worst part of weather like this is lack of water for the horses. Ah, uh, water holes, streams all dried up. Gee, what do we do? There's a ranch house up ahead. See the windmill? Uh, yeah. Todd and I'll wait here. You ride ahead and ask the rancher if we can water our horses at the corral trough. Sure. That's far enough from the house when no one will see us. Why ask them? Why not just ride up and water our horses anyway? Because the water's private property, Dan. I'm sure he'll give us permission, but we must ask for it first. All right. I'll be right back. Come on, Victor. Oh, oh, Victor. Oh, boy. I don't see anybody. No way. It sounds like somebody back in the bunkhouse. Golly, those fellows are sure fighting for keeps. The big one ever gets that gun. I better go get the Lone Ranger. Easy, boy. Come on, Victor. My gun. You grabbed my gun. I'm going to finish you, I tell you. No, Mike, you fool. I've hated you for as long as I can remember. You've always stood in my way. Now you ain't going to be in my way anymore. Show you. Hold oh, my hand. What the? You there, pick up that gun before he grabs it again. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. An engine and a kid. Hey, big fella. He isn't hurt. Watch out for him. Are you dirty? Come on, on your feet. Let go of me. You should be horsewhipped. Why? Where'd you fellas come from? We watched I... the whole thing from behind those trees. As long as it remained a fair fight, we didn't intend to interfere. When your friend here tried to turn it into murder, it was time to take a hand. He'd have killed me, all right. He's always wanted to. Someday I will. Someday I'll fix you for good. And it'll be by sneaking up behind my Why back. Hold still. Now, let go, I tell you. Let go of me. Let me get my hands on him. You'll and... do nothing. Watch out. Here come Pon Ma. What's going on back here? Bill, Mike, you've been fighting again. Steady, big fella. Come on, Tonto. Uh, get him up, Scout. Get up, Victor. Come on, Silver. 
Hey, wait. Who are those fellas? Crooks? What are they doing here? Oh, they, just... they took Bill's side when he tried to shoot me. What? Look there on the ground. I reckon you know Bill's gun when you see it. He was going to drill me. That's a lie. You grabbed my Quiet, gun. Quiet, both of you. Oh, my, you two poor boys, you're a sight. Let me get some warm water. Yeah, they can wait. But... There's something more important to settle first. Bill, I reckon this just about finishes things. But, Pa, Don't you interrupt don't... when I'm talking. Your head hopes you'd straighten up and try to be big enough to forget being jealous of Mike. You proved you won't. Because you're my real son and Mike's just adopted. You've counted on your ma and me to back you up when you pick fights with him. We never tried to favor one over the other. But you wouldn't have it that way. You've acted like you wanted to drive Mike clean off the place. That isn't so. so. From now on, you ain't no son of mine at all. You can pack up and get. Judd, no. You don't know what you're saying. Don't interfere, sir. I never picked the fights. It was Mike. I was never jealous of him a day in my life. It was always him that's been jealous of me. Uh, he's been afraid that because he's adopted, he won't get his full share of the ranch. Silence! I won't keep still. It's Mike's scheming that's done this. I never liked him. And I've never been afraid to say so either. And Mike, he's hung around you and Ma all mealy-mouthed, always telling you he'd like to be friends with me. And all the time hating me worse than a rattler. Now, you know that's not true, Bill. There's nothing I'd rather have done than be friends. Friends? And before they got here, you were telling me I'd always hated me? Friends. When you jumped me back here without warning, it would have drilled me if that masked man had... Well? Is that you again? Yes, You must wear it. Now, wait a minute. Mr. Answer me. I don't want no alibis. Sure. I was wearing it, but... that settles it. Get your duds and go. Very well. Judd, it's Bill you're saying this to. It's our boy. Judge, you can't do that. Come on, Sarah. There's nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> so you got your way at last. You made your scheming work. <laughs> you heard what your pa said. Pack up and get. And I'm going. I'm going so far, I'll never hear of the Circle K again. <laughs> but the country ain't so big that maybe someday our trails won't cross. And when they do, Mike, watch out. Bill Graves packed the few necessities he chose to take with him, saddled his favorite horse, and set out on the trail. He'd gone only a few miles, however, when... Hello, Bill. What? It's a masked man again. Oh, oh boy. Oh, the... oh. What are you doing here? When we rode away, Bill, we didn't ride out of view. It was pretty obvious what was happening. Your father blamed you for that fight, didn't he? That's not the half of it. He told me to get out, besides. Yes? So... Well, I'm getting. I see. Where do you plan to go? I don't know. It doesn't matter much. Up north, maybe. Wyoming. Somewhere up that way. Oh, don't be a fool. Huh? Don't go where your parents can't get in touch with you again if anything should happen. Oh, I figure to write Ma occasionally. But Pa's through with me. I reckon he won't care much where I go. Bill, I think I understand this situation better than you do. You see, Tonto and Dan and I have been in this section for some time... We've heard the talk. There's been talk enough. Yes, but the people around here are on your side. They've had Mike sized up for quite a while. It's funny Pa couldn't see what was plain to everybody else. Well, it's natural that he wouldn't. Mike always took care to be on his good behavior in the presence of your folks. Now, don't make the mistake of condemning your father for his mistake. Huh? He treated you just as a judge might if his own son appeared before him as a party in a lawsuit. If he were honorable, the judge would be especially severe with his son... Just to prove he wasn't playing favorites. You mean... I mean that you should stay in the district. Sooner or later, your father will learn the truth about Mike. When he does, he'll need you. Gosh, I... I never thought of it quite like that before. It's time you did. It seems funny. You, a masked man, lecturing me like this. Don't forget my mask. Will you, uh, take my advice? Stranger, I will. Because this is the straightest talk I've heard in quite a spell. Good. But I'd have done it anyhow. Because back there by the bunkhouse, when you shot the gun out of Mike's hand, you really saved my life. Now, where do you plan to go? To the cross J down the trail and get me a job. When Mike finds out I'm still around, he isn't going to like it. And that'll suit me just fine. Adios. Uh-huh. Goodbye. Adios. Get up. Get up. Oh, him plenty good fella. Gosh, 
I sure hope that brother of his gets what he deserves. Bill, we'll get justice, Dan, before we leave this district. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Go ahead, Victor. On the evening of the following day, just outside the Circle K Ranch House... Yeah, it looks like they're just about finished. Stand back, you fool. You want them to see you through the window? They can't see out easy. Yeah, just the same, Brazos. I don't want Judd to guess I was prying. Uh -huh. Hey, I think Judd's calling to Sarah. He's making motions like it. What's he trying to... Well, it likely means that they got to have witnesses. Brazos, get over by the porch. You're going to be one of them. And you're going to find out what's in that will. Brazos? Is that you, Mike? Yeah. Did you find out what's I in... I saw the whole thing. If Judd dies, the whole shebang is hers to use. But she's got to keep it in trust for you. And after her, the outfit's yours. Bill wasn't mentioned. Cut off clean. Uh, if Judd dies... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brazos. We're going where we can't be heard. Next morning. Well, it was a mighty fine breakfast here. It's been good to start off the day with some solid grub under his bed. Hey, where's Mike? Yep, yet? Is uh, Mike up yet, sir? Say that. Well? Well, didn't you hear me? I asked you if Mike was up yet. I heard you. Watch out for that kittle. Hey, Martin. Well, if you heard me, why didn't you answer? I guess you know how I feel. Now, look, honey. Did you I... figure you could get that lawyer out here last night and me not know why? Judge, you changed your will, and don't try to tell me different. I did. You left Bill out of it. I did. You fixed it so as everything had go to Mike. I did. You did. You did. You did. Oh, you're talking just like a parrot. Judd, how can you stand there and admit you've done such a thing to your own son? And never have the grace to blush for it. We won't discuss it. No, we won't discuss it. Because you know full well you're in the wrong. Oh, Judd. Judd, you're as blind as a newborn calf. You think as much of Bill as I do. Only you made up your mind to be stubborn and you won't change it. If you're going to carry on like this, I'll have to tell you never to mention Bill's name in this house. And uh, when Mike gets up... Tell him I want him just as soon as he finished breakfast. Judd, wait. <sighs> Morning. Is that uh, Judd just went out? It was. Sit down and eat. Your place is all laid out for you. And when you're finished, Judd wants you. Yeah? What for? To help him fix the windmill, I suppose. You heard him say last night that there was some work to be done on it. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot. Uh, how about some coffee? Well, that'll be enough, thanks. Hey, hey what's up? I don't know. Oh, the men are all running for the windmill. Oh, I can't see what... What's oh, Judd? Something's happened to Judd. Hey, what the... Judd! Judd! Oh, he's just... just lying there. He's hurt mighty bad. Let him through. Stand back. Stand back. Don't go crowd too close. Somebody do something. Well, what happened? Well, ma'am, I don't rightly know. Dusty there seen it. Judd was near the top of the windmill, and all of a sudden he fell. One of the rungs must have come loose. Oh, oh Judd. <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, to continue our story, Sarah, Judd's wife, regained her self-possession a few moments after the windmill accident occurred. With a few swift commands, she brought order out of confusion. Under her supervision, Judd was carried gently to the ranch house. Can't any of you do anything but stand around? 
Omaha, you go fetch that kettle of boiling water on the stove. Yes, sir. Dusty, you fetch clean linen. Right away. Somebody's got to go for the doctor. Which one of you'll go? I'll go. All right, Mike. Hurry just as fast as you can. Well, uh, who'll I get? Doc Fletcher, of course. Just wouldn't have anyone else. Now get a move on. Hey, Brace Hose, come along. Give me a hand saddling. Sure. Think you'll pull through? Yeah, with a doctor, maybe. That's just why I said I'd go for one. To make sure that none shows up. Hey, you got that soap in your pocket that I told you about? Sure, but I don't see what you... Well, give it to me and quit asking questions. You know what you gotta do, and I know what's up to me. Now, come on, get a move on. We gotta make it look as though I can't get started for Doc Fletcher soon enough. Time, Tonto and Dan riding beside him, the Lone Ranger had raced to the Cross J and young Bill Graves. They were saved a trip to the ranch headquarters when they sighted Bill in the distance preparing a drift fence. There he is, Tonto. Uh, Hand him up, scout. Come on, Silver. Come on, Victor. Hi there. Bill, get to the saddle. Anything wrong? Oh, Silver, oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. What's up? Get your horse. Come here, boy. It's your father, Bill. My father? <laughs> What's happened? I was riding to your place to see him. I hoped that a talk would bring him to his senses. I reached there in time to see him fall from the ladder leading up the side of your windmill. Then he's hurt. I've got to see him. Yes, he's hurt quite badly, I'm afraid. But wait. Wait? What for? I've got to get... Now listen to me. Your father will get the best of care without you. What's needed is a doctor. Didn't they send for one? Oh, I don't know. Probably they did. Nevertheless, speed is important. Whoever left is still a distance behind me. You have a head start and can save almost an hour. Right. You coming? No. Otto and Dan and I will return to the ranch. Your father's fall may have been an accident, and it may not. We're going to find out. On your way, Bill. I'll see you there. Get up. Get up, boy. Maybe wrong, Tonto. I have an idea that fall was no accident. Judd fell because one of the rungs of that ladder gave way. I'd like to examine that ladder. Uh-huh. And we find out. Get him up, scout. Get up, Come on, Silver. The masked man and his companions, Dan Reed and Tonto, were within sight of the Circle K when still another unexpected event added to the day's excitement. The ranch hands, gathered in the bunkhouse to speculate upon the injury to their employer, were startled by a shout from outside. Fire! Windmill jump, fire! Hey, that's taxi. Yell something about the windmill. Look through the window. It's a fire. Come on! How did it start? I don't know. I just saw. We got to pull it out. Get buckets, fellas, and fetch water from the tank. Somebody grab a tarp and try to smother it. Come on, hustle. You needn't worry about the house, ma'am. Ain't enough wind to carry the sparks. Well, what are you going to do? Boys will take care of it. They're after buckets. No. No, let it go. The old windmill ain't worth it. One of you boys might be burned by falling timbers or something. Just let it go and see that it don't start nothing else fire. Well, that's the way you want it, ma'am. Brazos! Yeah? Tell the boys to just fetch enough water for flying sparks. We're letting the wheel men burn. Right. Now, yeah, mass man. Put out that fire. Pull a whistle before oh, oh, I go. Oh, 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 oh. Did you hear me? Put out that fire. Who are you to give orders here? Steady, big fella. There's no time for talking, ma'am. Tell your men to do as I've told them. That fire was started to destroy evidence. Are you men going to follow orders willingly, or do I make you? Grab the mass man and the engine, boys, while I get the kid. Take hold. Stand back. You're all covered. I'll shoot if I have to. Now get busy. Fill those buckets. You can still get the fire under control. You got the drop on us. How dare you? How dare you give orders here? If Judd weren't lying helpless... If he weren't, this wouldn't be necessary. Otto. Uh Uh-uh. Me here. Stand here where you can keep an eye on these fellows. See that they keep busy. If they try anything, Dan can come to call me. Where are you going? I want to talk with that fellow over there. You there! Me? Oh, one moment. What do you want? Now, what's your name? Brazos is what they call me, mister. What's his name? Come with me. Hey, what's the come idea? Come along. You and I are going to have a little talk. Hey, let go. You've got no right You've to do this. You've got some questions to answer. What questions? My friends and I saw the windmill burning as we rode here. That fellow they called Tex gave the alarm. What difference does that make? Just this. You were in a position to have seen the fire and give that alarm long before him. Now, wait. You didn't, however, and I want to know why. When the Lone Ranger had finished his interview with Brazos, the Circle K hands had succeeded in smothering the flames that had threatened the windmill. While the hostile but puzzled men clustered around them, 
The masked man gave Tonto and Dan certain instructions. Tonto, if possible, find the rung that gave way into Judd. Uh, me try. That's impossible. It's been hidden and destroyed. Make an examination of the place where the rung broke off. Won't be safe to climb up there. The windmill's worthless now. I'll have the part you want chopped down. Uh. Dan, wait right here and call me if anyone tries to interfere with Tonto's search. All right. There's law in this county, stranger. Even if you and your friends don't seem to know it. For what you've done here today, I promise you, you'll pay. We've done nothing that... Look up the trail, ma'am. The doctor's coming. Who, who's that right beside Miss Buggy? Your son, Bill. Bill! Oh, son! Hi, Ma. Here's Doc Fletcher. Who? Who? Who there? Who, who there? Who up there? Oh, Bill! Where's Pa? How's he now? The maxman told me that... Is Pa hurt bad? He... He is, Bill. But I know it'll make him mighty glad to see you. Only, well, if he doesn't act like it, you just pay no attention. It's just his way. Sure, Ma. Don't you worry. Where is Mr. Graves, ma'am? Uh, one word, please, before you go inside. Well, who is this masked man? I don't know. He's he... my friend, Doc. Stranger, go ahead and say whatever you wanted to. I'm going to ask something of the doctor. I want him to promise to obey without asking questions. Well, I don't know what this is all about, but if you're a friend of Bill's... I'm it's... remaining outside. Sometime before long, I'll fire a signal. The signal will be three shots. But what does that mean? When you hear them, Doctor... I want you to leave Judd's room and hide yourself. I uh, hide myself? Right. I don't understand, friend, but if those are your orders, I guess we can carry them out. Do exactly as I've said. You won't regret it. Someone will enter the house after I've signaled. No matter who it is, don't let him know the doctor has already arrived. Bill, is it all right? Do you think we should do as he says? No, nah, his word's good enough for me. Come on, the doc's needed inside. Judd recovered consciousness under the care of Dr. Fletcher. And as he opened his eyes... Bill. It's you, Bill. Yes, Pa. Oh, Judd, I, I was afraid. I, you, you know I said Bill wasn't to come here. You, you disobeyed me. Judd, it, it was Bill brought the doctor. It doesn't matter. Pa, can't we forget what's past? Can't we start over again and be friends I like... I never go back on my word. Please, Judd, Bill never Don't meant... Don't talk yet. I'm sorry, ma'am. Judd hadn't better do any more talking than necessary. Whatever this is about, it, it can wait. Forget it, Ma. Oh, I was so... The signal. Doc, you won't have to leave the room. That closet, get in there. But I... Don't waste time. Get in there before I throw you in. This, this is preposterous. What is this? Don't ask questions, Pa. Just keep quiet. I don't know myself just what the whole thing's about. But you'll see it's for the best. I think there's someone coming. Uh -huh. Don't let on now. Mike. It's all right. I came back alone because I could make better time. But the doc will be here before long. Is that all right? What'd you just say, Mike? I said the doc's just behind. Well, if it's any of your business, what are you doing here anyhow? I brought doc... I'll handle this, Bill. Hey, the masked man. Why'd you fire those shots outside? What you... I'll show you. You said you'd seen the doctor and he was on his way here. Well, how do you explain this? Uh, Doc Fletcher. And you said you just seen him. Well, I haven't seen Mike in almost a month. You lied, Mike. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I never said it was uh, Doc Fletcher I fetched. It, it, it was Doc Squibbs. Yeah, yeah, Doc Squibbs. It was him I saw. Yeah, but you were told to get Doc Fletcher. Well, he, he wasn't in. That's why I... Well, I went to him first. I did what I could. I've been riding just as fast as I could to get help for Judd. Well, if you don't believe me, take a look at my horse. Yeah, you just take a look. Look at the way he's lathered. You'll see how hard I was riding. Lathered, Yes. It was soap to make it look like perspiration. Huh? What said he? Anyone here who wishes proof has only to go outside and look at Mike's horse before he gets a chance to rub it down. Look here. Quiet. Mike, you had no intention of getting a doctor. You wanted Judd to die. You wanted him to die ever since he altered his will in your favor. No, no. When you said you were going for a doctor, you rode only far enough to be out of sight. You hid until you thought enough time had passed. Then lathered your horse with soap to make it look as though he'd been ridden hard. No, it ain't true. I swear it ain't. No, no, look, don't believe what the masked man's saying. He's a friend of Bill's. He can't prove it. He's working with Bill to trick me somehow. Bring him in, Toto. Uh, you get in there. Oh, yeah. And you bring lathered. Brazos! Why, you double-crossing... I no couldn't help it, Mike. The masked man made me talk. If I hadn't, there's no telling what he'd have done. That's enough. If anyone wants still more evidence against Mike, they can examine the piece of wood Dan has in his hand. It's a part of the ladder from which Judd fell. You see, the rung of that ladder didn't break by accident. It had been partly sawed through. And that piece of wood will prove it. You, you 
You would have killed me for my money, Mike. After all I tried to do for you. Mrs. Graves, that's why I had to force your men to put out the fire at the windmill. Brazo set it afire on purpose to hide this evidence. I didn't understand. I won't be caught. One side, get a side or I'll blast my way through. Hold on. Try to get me. Oh, Grab him. The masked man shot his gun away. Uh, he I'll help you. Hold on now. Mr. Judd, everything Mike did was part of a plan to get you to disinherit Bill. Bill had nothing to do with the trouble. I guess I've been just as blind as Sarah told me. And I'm sure you'll work out everything for the best. Adios. Wait, wait a minute. It's all right, Judd. You know it is. It'll be all right if Bill can forget my stubbornness. As far as I'm concerned, Pa, if you'll only hurry up and get well, that's all I care Let about. Go of it. Oh, still there, Mike. You and Brazos are going to jail. Oh, I... And if you've got any ideas of getting away, forget it. Just remember the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.